Hi there folks, uh, Simon here, Ario's Pipe Smoker, and I believe it is episode 6 of this year's How to Process Whole Leaf Tobacco series. Um, this video is going to be how to stove tobacco and how to make black cavendish. Um, but before we get started, uh, I guess a couple of updates. Um, yeah, to start with, my van almost passed its control. Um, as in, I was expecting a big long list of quite expensive jobs to do, maybe some welding. And as it turns out, um, yeah, just the prop shaft bearings need changing. Everything else passed. Uh, a couple of minor things. Um, the light stopped working at the back because I jet washed it uh, before the before the um, before the control and. Uh, I think some water got in and the back lights were playing up, but uh, yeah, so basically that means that I now have two months with which to do the repairs um, and I can drive around within this two months. I have, I have the, um, the pass, provisional pass sticker in the windshield, so um, yeah, hopefully be able to get a few road trips um, filmed, uh, possibly go up to Andorra, which is like way, way up. Um, I think you're around at about 2,000 metres above sea level. Um, so that, yeah, that, and it's obviously a duty-free, tax-free haven. Um, so, looking forward to that. Um, I've had some, a... Uh, oh, God. Uh, um, two packets of Latakia, pure Latakia. We'll go in uh, one of the blends, I'm sure. Mmm, absolutely wonderful. Mmm, uh, so yeah, that turned up. Uh, when I when I finished um, doing this stoving uh, and this Cavendish, that's that's kind of all the Virginia's taken care of. Um, I haven't moved on to the Burleys and the Orientals yet because hopefully tomorrow in the post I've got some 100% pure licorice turning up which I can render down to make a, a kind of licorice casing syrup. Um, thanks to uh, John um, for suggesting. Um, he did recommend... Um, John, what's your, what's your um, YouTube handles? I think, I think it's Dale... Dale Pounder, possibly Dale Pipe Smoker. Memory like a sieve, it's quite early in the morning actually. But he recommended a um, licorice syrup from uh, Denmark that he's experimented with. And I um, I looked online to get it. Um, it was available, but when, when I looked at the ingredients, I thought, well, actually, um, this is just something I can make. So I've, I've ordered some 100% totally pure lic uh, licorice um, from, I think it's coming from Italy possibly. But I'm hoping that'll be here tomorrow, so I thought, well, okay, then I'm, I'll delay the Burleys and the Orientals um, until I have a, 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 um, this in the arsenal, um, because I think it's probably going to lend itself quite well uh, to either a Burley, the Burleys, to an Oriental. I'm not sure until it turns up. So, I'm smoking my uh, Dr. Plum Bulldog. Now, for those of you who have seen the um, uh, video I did on Virginias, um, I kind of come to the conclusion that this bright leaf Virginia was kind of the weakest one. And so I've decided to uh, stove it. Um, Stoving basically, uh, it's a very fancy word just for cooking the hell out of it for a long time. Um, and the heat caramelizes the sugars with inside the leaf, so you get a... Uh, a lot deeper kind of taste it really does change 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 the flavor quite quite significantly um, the difference between stoving and cavendish i think is quite simple that stoving is done with purely heat uh, whereas cavendish making you introduce steam into the equation 
and so with a faithful pressure cooker I can do both of the processes at the same time. Um, I've already prepared um, some jars here. Um, so basically I've, I've, I've stuffed the, the leaves into the jar and sealed it up which means no external steam can get in and these will just cook at a, a constant temperature for I'm probably going to do it for about six or seven hours because this is how long it takes for the Cavendish to make but um, we'll move on to that and um, so let me put the pipe down I did um, an experimental run of a small jar of this uh, a day or two ago um, it's kind of quite successful uh, and well basically I thought well they're going to be cooking for a long time so let's try and uh, add another nuance to the flavour um, the aroma of doing this is incredible it doesn't really come through um, it's not obvious in the, the, the taste of the tobacco but it just adds another subtle nuance and I, I, I think um, when you when you when you have a little of these these subtleties all put together in a blend i'm hoping it's going to uh, improve the overall um the over, you know the quality of the overall product and um, so i went for a walk up to the church and they've got these lovely um, big rose bush there so i've been deheading uh deheading the big rose bush so it'll continue to flower for the summer and what I've done is, and what I'm going to do today is, I'm going to put a handful of these lovely smelling rose petals in the bottom of the jar. So as it's cooking, it's just a very subtle infusion of, uh, yes, it's more of an aroma than a taste, but it, yeah, why not? It's all about experiments. And then quite simply, this, this leaf is completely uncased. Um, I don't want to cook this with, um, if I cased it and had put um, obviously quite a, a significant amount of sugar on the leaf, um, I think what would happen is cooking it for this long is, I don't know if anyone's uh, familiar with candy making or, or sweet making as we call it in, in, in uh, England, um, but if you heat sugar up to certain temperatures for certain lengths of time, um, I think it's called um, crack, <laughs> as in um, obviously a really hard um, a, a candy, bonbon, sweet that you eat. The sugars uh, have become very, very hard, um, and this is due to being at a certain temperature for a certain length of time. Whereas something like um, caramels, or, or you know, or the difference between a soft toffee and a hard toffee. Is, is kind of what temperature the sugar's taken to and for how long it's taken to. So I thought, I don't want to risk um, making a hard crack sugar on the leaf because uh, that's not really what we want, I don't think. So I'm going to do this uncased, this process, and when it's finished, make the decision whether it actually does need casing because there's a lot of chemical changes in the staving process. Um, it drives out a lot of the ammonia, um, it's kind of almost like a fake aging. Um, so quite simply, these are all destemmed. I'm just going to load up this final jar here. Well, I say the final jar. I was thinking, I was thinking there'd be three jars of this, and the rest would go for the Cavendish. Um, possibly there'd be four jars of this. Um, I'm just going to see how much leaf is physically left. Um, Mm 
really get quite a lot in there, you know. I think that should be okay. Yeah. And then, because this is going to be steamed at, you know, at full pressure for six or seven hours, I've, I've actually put maybe this much water in because we don't want to risk it uh, boiling dry. And the, the, the cabin dish is very simple. Um, I don't know if we can see that on here. We have, we have the tops of the lids here. So I'm, I'm going to kind of use that as a, to wrap just quite simply, put the tobacco leaves on top like that. Um, we don't want these leaves to go in the water. It's a steam process, not a boiling process. And after six or seven hours, these will be pretty, pretty black. can be a bit of a bugger because you do end up with a, 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 a kind of, the leaves do kind of adhere to each other and they're a bit of a bugger to separate. But, uh, still got, actually I'll keep this one out. As a, so when it's cooked we can do a, a colour comparison. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I've tried doing Cavendish just in the jars, um, and I've tried doing it uh, by adding, um, in the past, add, adding like uh, some rum in the jar, and thinking that the, the, the steam within the jar itself would, would, would uh, make the Cavendish, but it, it does something, but it doesn't make Cavendish. I think you actually do need uh, quite a lot of steam do the process. Well, I'm going to load this up. There's no point watching me do that. There's quite a lot here to get through. Um, and I'll come back later on in the day when, when, when it's had its uh, six or seven hours and we can um, compare results. I'll keep this leaf to one side so... Uh, we can we can see the the, the difference in colour. Um, yeah, okay. So the miracles of modern technology. I will see you in six or seven hours, my time. About two seconds your time. <laughs> okay, guys. See you in a minute. Well, as it turns out, it's actually the next day. Um, I was hoping to unload the pressure cooker um, and, and and show you almost in real time, but Jesus, there was one hell of a rainstorm. Um, when it started, it was so abrupt, it kind of sounded like somebody had fired a, a, um, a shotgun at my roof and all the pellets hit the roof. It, it was incredibly intense um, and incredibly noisy, so I couldn't really even film within the house because all, all you'd have he heard is uh, the most intense rain I've heard for a very long time. Um, so I've, I've already unloaded the pressure cooker and I'll show you the results. Um, again, this is the, the reference leaf. Um, this is the, you can see the colour difference without dropping it on the floor of the, uh, the stoved Virginias and it smells absolutely incredible actually. It's gone from not really having much smell um, and it all, almost smells like um, fruitcake or, or, or um, I won't say brownies because I guess they're chocolate, but a, a, a kind of a very, very kind of, yeah, like a, like fruitcake, I guess. So I, th I think the addition of um, some rose petals in the bottom has really added to the overall um, aroma. It's kind of quite incredible, the change. Um, it's still got the breadiness. I think this is why I'm, I'm, I'm getting a kind of fruitcake 
thing and the, and the addition of the rose petals has just given it that kind of um, slightly raisiny um, caramel uh, toffee kind of aroma. So I'm, I'm unsure if I'm even going to case this. I'm not sure. And here, this, um, yeah, still very wet, is the, the Cavendish on top. And again, you can, you can see the, the difference in colour there. Obviously, this needs to be dried out. And if I get a bit of... Hopefully, we'll get the colour differentiation. You can see, by letting the steam go in, so look, it's gone a lot, a uh, lot darker, and um, it hasn't really turned so black. Um, I could give it longer, and it, it would blacken, um, but it, it it does darken a lot when it dries. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get this uh, on the drying rack. I say a drying rack; it's actually an old ironing board. <laughs> um, so um, that's kind of uh, staving and Cavendish making taken care of. I mean, I, I know some people stove their commercial blends um, with various techniques, but like I say, putting it inside um, a jam jar or a glass jar and put it in the pressure cooker, it does stop it drying out and going crispy. So, yeah, again, it's, it's a kind of uh, a, a, an adaptable technique. Um, so today the licorice should be arriving. Um, I'm going to go for a walk, I think. Um, it's forecast to be about 30 degrees today. Um, it's still quite early in the day. So I'm thinking about um, going up the mountain a little bit. Um, so I'm going to have a nice walk and, and kind of get back here. Um, by, yeah, kind of lunchtime. So I'm not out in the, up the mountain in, in full, full heat because it uh, can be quite intense. Um, well, so that's it guys and I will see you in the next few days I imagine so yeah hopefully you're having a nice weekend I should get this uploaded tonight so um, yeah so see you in a few days take care guys and uh, thanks for your time and I hope uh, it's been um, of some use and if not of some use maybe a mediocre of entertainment. <laughs> Alright guys, take care. See you soon.